Now we're considering the rotational motion of a rigid body about its center of mass. Newton's second law for rotational motion is that the applied torque equals the rate of change of angular momentum. So first we'll need an expression for the angular momentum of a rotating rigid object. We model a rigid body as a collection of point masses having a fixed spatial relationship with one another, and we're considering only rotational motion of a rigid body about its center of mass. The contribution of each point mass, m sub i, to the angular momentum is a vector with magnitude equal to the linear momentum of m sub i due to rotational motion times r sub i, the vector from the center of mass to m sub i. The direction of the angular momentum is given by the right-hand rule, rotating r sub i into the velocity vector for m sub i. Summing the contributions of each of the point masses, we have an expression for the total angular momentum of the rotating body. Since the cross product is doing all the work in computing the angular momentum, we'll review it briefly. The cross product of two vectors a and b is another vector c, whose magnitude equals the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the sine of the angle between the vectors. The direction of the cross product is determined by the right hand rule. That is, with the fingers of your right hand pointing in the direction that rotates a to b, your thumb is pointing in the direction of a cross b. The components of the cross product c equals a cross b are calculated using the formulas given for c sub x, c sub y, and c sub z. The expression for the total angular momentum of a rigid body rotating about its center of mass is shown at the top of the page. Let omega be the instantaneous rotation rate vector for the rigid body. Then the velocity of the mass m sub i at location r sub i is given by the cross product of omega and r sub i. Making this substitution for v sub i gives the expression for total angular momentum at the bottom of the page. Now it's just a matter of taking the cross products to get an expression for total angular momentum in component form. This page gives the details. The only math involved is the cross product and regrouping terms and summing the results. On the first line, we compute omega cross r sub i. On the second line, we compute m sub i times r sub i cross omega cross r sub i. And we regroup the terms. On the third line, the expression is written as a product of a 3 by 3 matrix and the angular rate vector. Also on the third line, the total momentum is calculated by summing the momentum of each of the masses. The result is a 3 by 3 moment of inertia matrix times the angular rate vector. The angular momentum of a rigid body equals the moment of inertia matrix times the angular rate vector. I sub xx is the moment of inertia about the x-axis, I sub yy is the moment of inertia about the y-axis, and I sub zz is the moment of inertia about the z-axis. The off-diagonal terms in the moment of inertia matrix are called products of inertia. The matrix is symmetric, with I sub xy equal to I sub yx, I sub yz equal to I sub zy, and I sub xz equal to I sub zx. The moment of inertia matrix maps angular rate vectors to angular momentum vectors, and hence it's a tensor, but that's incidental to our purposes now. If there are planes of symmetry in the rigid body, then a body frame can be chosen so that some of the products of inertia are zero. Given body frame axes x, y, and z as shown, if the x, z plane is a plane of symmetry, then the products of inertia involving y vanish. For example, each term in the calculation of I sub xy on the right-hand side of the xz plane has a matching term on the left-hand side of the xz plane that cancels it, so I sub xy is zero. If there are two planes of symmetry, then the moment of inertia matrix is diagonal. Also, from matrix eigenvalue eigenvector theory, it can be shown that any moment of inertia matrix has three eigenvectors, and these eigenvectors are principal axes that result in a diagonal moment of inertia matrix. The assignment is optional and there is no program. Newton's second law for rotational motion is that the applied torque T equals the rate of change of angular momentum 
DLDT. In the next video, we'll derive the angular equations of motion for a rigid body, that is, an equation for d omega dt, the angular acceleration. The optional assignment is to give the derivation some thought. The difficulty is that Newton's laws apply in an inertial frame, and in an inertial frame, the moment of inertia matrix is constantly changing if omega is non-zero. How can that problem be overcome? Yeah, check yourself